All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So we all know how good of an offseason the Jets have had so far, whether you want to talk about free agency or the draft, right? All these new acquisitions, adding leadership, culture fits, system fits, uh, tons of talent to major positions of need, uh, and also take into consideration the other core pieces that the Jets already have, right? Guys like Elijah Moore, AVT, guys go trending upwards, going in the right direction. And plus it's year two for the coaching staff, year two for Zach Wilson. And we've we've talked a lot about this on the, and you guys bring it up all the time in the, in the, uh, in the comments. You know, think about how many different bullet points, how many arrows are trending upwards for the Jets and how many are trending down. Think, compare that to maybe the last year of Adam uh, Adam Gase's second year, right? Like how many people, like, like you just thought, you know, who's the team? What was the identity? What are the goals here? It, it just seemed like there wasn't really any sor sort of direction. And there was a really uh, negative vibe, negative aura surrounding the, surrounding the team, okay? So even though the Jets made all of these moves, added all of these guys, in the eyes of Vegas, it didn't really move the needle uh, forward, right? Sites like Vegas Insider, TheLines.com, who else? Odd Shark. You know, these sites had the win-loss over-under for the Jets at 5.5. Now you're thinking, man, like that's that's pretty low. And what's shocking is, you know, if we look at the win-loss uh, or the majority of the win-loss uh, projections a year ago for the Jets, it was four. So it's like you're telling me the Jets added three first-round picks. Again, we, we could go down the list of all the talent that the Jets brought in. So many different things trending upwards. And that only gave all of those acquisitions. It, it only gave them one, one and a half wins. One and a, that's it. Like that's that's a little crazy to me. And a site called Action Network recently posted their updated NFL win loss over under, and the Jets were still at five and a half. They actually put out a really really interesting point, saying that at Caesars there's 43% more bets on the Jets to hit the over than any other team out there. That's crazy to me. Okay, it really is. And when I'm thinking about next season, I gotta be honest, five and a half just feels a little too low. It feels a little too low. I, I think for me, my sweet spot is seven, eight wins. That's where I feel like the Jets will realistically fall. Uh, of course, assuming a lot of things here, you know, with health and waiver pickups, not knowing who exactly we're going to be playing, uh, like the whole Deshaun Watson, you know, situation. Like there's still so much, so much time before the start of the season, you know, but with that said, I still feel like five and a half is too low. I mean, we talked about the upgrades. We talked about all the arrows pointing up, but think about, you know, I, look, I, I know that the Jets were a bottom five team in football last year, but when you look at how the Jets played in certain weeks, you know, Mike White at quarterback, that team was in the Super Bowl. The Jets beat them. Granted, it was early in the season, but still, I mean, we have to give credit where it's due. What about the Tennessee Titans game? Oh, another playoff team. What else? The Bucks game. You know, that was another matchup where the Jets were taking on a playoff team and took them all the way to the end. Literally came down to the last play. Okay, so, you know, when I'm looking at everything going into next season, I don't again feel like the five and a half number is fair okay so i would love to get your take on it um i, I do feel like the jets should be rated a, a little higher here and uh yeah thanks so much for watching let me know your thoughts and as always go jets